At a low-key gathering in Nevada, Tesla celebrated the delivery of its first-ever semi-truck. Five years after the heavy-duty carrier was introduced, it became a reality now. Did you know that this small event can change the course of Tesla and the whole billion-dollar industry? The event's primary emphasis was the semi, the first deliveries of which will go to PepsiCo and Frito-Lay. Elon bragged about the truck's capabilities, including a graphic showing its progress as it traveled from Vermont, California to San Diego, California. Tesla also claimed that the Cybertruck accelerates significantly faster than typical diesel-powered semi-trucks, even when fully loaded. The transport truck would be capable of traveling over 500 miles on a single charge and driving at a total loaded weight of 82,000 pounds, which is 2,000 pounds higher than what is permitted under U.S. federal standards due to its electric nature. Before the event, the truck on display drove up 4,136 feet of height before returning down. It's also much more straightforward to operate than conventional semi-trucks, Musk claims, since it doesn't have a multi-geared gearbox like diesel vehicles. During the presentation, the driver of the full electric semi-truck sat in the middle of the cab rather than on the left or the right side, which is rare. Tesla presented footage of a fully laden Tesla semi driving up a steep slope and past other trucks. Although Musk did not disclose how many trucks were delivered to PepsiCo, how many were built, or at what pace. The regenerative brakes, which utilize the vehicle's speed to replenish the batteries, aided it on the last portion of the journey. Tesla's senior manager of truck engineering, Dan Priestley, stated that this feature may be a safety advantage, since drivers will not have to downshift and may not even have to touch the brakes as they descend slopes. It could also be beneficial for folks who live near the roadway. Although regenerative braking will let the truck go farther, it will still need to charge large batteries when they run out of power. Musk and Priestley also touted new megawatt ultra-fast chargers that swiftly replenish the truck's batteries. However, they are yet to specify how long it would take to recharge the vehicle. Finally, when Tesla's pickup truck goes on sale, which we believe will happen soon, these chargers will be made accessible to Cybertruck drivers, according to Musk. According to Priestley, the technique is vital for larger applications like the Semi. It takes some extremely specialized engineers to achieve securely. Tesla's autopilot technology, marketed as one of the benefits for long-haul truck drivers, in the first presentation five years ago, should have been mentioned more during the Nevada presentation. According to a study by the American Lung Association, replacing gas and diesel cars with electric trucks could make a huge difference in people's health and save tens of thousands of lives. Musk also mentioned such advantages during the presentation and the benefit of noise reduction for individuals who live near roads. Still on the Cybertruck, Musk also claims a water cooling system in the charger will enable the power line to stay short and maneuverable. You're really immersing the conductor in the coolant. This water-based coolant that we have here, and we've completed some really clever isolation monitoring on the back end to verify that it's safe and providing what it needs to, Priestley said. However, that implies that we can pack a lot of current into very little space. So if you've charged your vehicle at a V3 supercharger and the cable is nice and maneuverable, it's the same thing here, only we're simply blasting a megawatt through it instead. Because of its tiny size, megawatt charging will be accessible at truck stops and ordinary superchargers. And that will be helpful since the Cybertruck, according to Musk, will be capable of charging at megawatt rates. It is unknown how long the chargers will take to charge the battery in the Cybertruck or the Semi. However, Tesla claims that the latter's tri-motor, 1,000-volt powertrain would be used in additional Tesla cars, but they did not specify which ones. Thanks to newly filed design patents, we now know where most of the impetus for the Cybertruck comes from. Let's talk more about this futuristic innovation in case you missed our video where we talked about the features of the Cybertruck. As you can see from its looks, the design is unmistakably futuristic, possibly more so than any concept vehicle that has ever touched the road. The Cybertruck is famous for having Tesla armor glass, designed to protect the windows from even the most potent heavy item opponents. The glass broke during the unveiling. However, Musk said that it was because the glass was shattered before the presentation and that it was not the fault of the glass. The external shell of the Cybertruck is designed for maximum durability and passenger protection. Starting with a virtually impenetrable exoskeleton, every component from ultra-hard 30X cold-rolled stainless steel structural skin 
to Tesla Armor Glass is intended for unparalleled strength and durability. Outside, Cybertruck will provide 100 cubic feet of lockable outside storage, onboard electricity, and pressurized air for activities such as camping. The Tesla can raise or lower the suspension by 4 inches and has a payload capability of 3,500 pounds. When the electric vehicle was first announced, Musk said that the outside would be redesigned, including eliminating the door handles. However, the CEO claims that there are no doorknobs, the car knows you and opens the door. The Tesla Cybertruck seats six passengers and has a 6.5-foot bed, which they term the Cybertruck Vault. The top is covered but unrolled if you need to fit anything higher than the vault ceiling. For those interested in a smaller Cybertruck that would be better appropriate for non-US markets, Musk has also said that a smaller Cybertruck for Europe is very probable. Initially, Musk tweeted in March 2020 that Tesla had begun researching areas for Cybertruck manufacturing and that the truck would be built in the central USA. Tesla first referred to the plant as the Cybertruck Gigafactory. Still, subsequently, Tesla decided to construct the Model Y there first, so it was named Gigafactory Texas. For obvious reasons, that model is unlikely to be produced in Texas alongside its full-sized counterpart. If a smaller Cybertruck does emerge, it will most likely be constructed at Tesla's second under-construction plant, Giga Berlin. Tesla has also launched reservations for the Cybertruck in China. With the company's larger drive for localized manufacture, future Cybertruck inventory may also be produced there. However, whether or not there will be demand remains to be seen. The existence of a specialized trailer for the Cybertruck has long been speculated, but never proven. So fingers crossed, as a towing trailer is also an early addition when the Tesla eventually begins deliveries. Wondering if the Tesla Cybertruck still cost the same amount when it was revealed? Well, here's an update on that. Musk stated that the new Cybertruck would start at $39,900 before incentives. Still, two additional AWD variants will be starting at $49,900 and $69,900, respectively. In addition, Tesla promises to roll out a V10 beta version of its full self-driving capabilities. Customers may presently upgrade to the FSD capability for an extra $10,000. Research shows the twin-motor and tri-motor variants are the most popular. The single-motor RWD version will have a range of more than 250 miles. A dual-motor all-wheel drive version will have a range of 300-plus miles, while a tri-motor AWD version will have a range of 500-plus miles. Only around 17% of pre-orders are for the single-motor variant, which is expected to be available initially. Although Tesla's priority is delivering the twin and tri-motor Cybertruck variants to consumers first. We noticed that Tesla has deleted all Cybertruck pricing and specifications from their website, so the overhead costs are most likely subject to change. Musk recently switched things up when he tweeted about liking Coca-Cola products. We believe this made things look awkward between Tesla and PepsiCo. This is because Coca-Cola is Pepsi's main rival. Musk, who now oversees both Tesla and Twitter, shared a snapshot of his bedside table, which captured four open cans of Diet Coke. In response to someone else's post regarding Diet Coke goods on Monday, he tweeted, Don't love the name, but the drink itself is fantastic and gives me pleasure. This was a couple of days before the presentation. However, PepsiCo Beverages North America CEO Kirk Tanner and PepsiCo Foods North America CEO Stephen Williams emerged after the event. They thanked Musk for enabling them to participate in the Tesla semi-truck program. And I thank you for watching this video. See you in the next one.